One of the main concepts in programming is variables. They are your best friends. You will deal with them all the time. You will use them to store information. They will represent your data input. Let's say you want to have a variable x that is equal to the value of 5 and then ask the computer to tell you the value of that variable. So, we must tell the machine that x equals 5. And this is how you could do this in Python. Type x equals 5. To go through the process of programming, the line that says x equals 5 is called a command or a program. This is just a line of text. To make something out of it, we must execute it. Only then will the computer carry out operations with it. Press Shift and Enter, not just Enter, and a variable called x will be created and assigned with a value of 5. To be more precise, equality in Python and in programming means assign or bind to. Okay, we carry this operation, but we see nothing right now. How can we ask the computer to show us the output of what we just did? It would be sufficient to write X and then press Shift and Enter. And here's the result, 5. Great. As you can see, typing in a single line of code entails a few concepts of programming simultaneously. In the next few lectures, we'll make sure everything falls in place. Now, let's assign the value 8 to a variable we call Y. All right, Shift plus Enter, and we can check Y. However, I'll type capital Y. Oh, an error. This shows us that Python is case sensitive, so pay attention to that. It matters if you use lowercase or uppercase letters. An alternative way to execute the instruction that will provide the value we assign to Y would be to use the print command. At first sight, it seems redundant, as we showed we can just type Y. Nevertheless, this command is applied often. You'll see it in most of the code produced by professionals. It complements the logical flow of your instructions. For instance, if we say print Y, the machine will simply execute this command and provide the value of Y as a statement, and this is all a programmer must see sometimes. The last thing I'd like to share with you in this lecture is you can assign a certain number of values to the same number of variables. To create the variables x and y, we have to assign two values, say 1 and 2. We must separate each of the variables and each of the values with a comma. The parentheses here are not obligatory, but we use them to improve the readability of our code. Now, if I call x or y separately, the computer will correctly give me their respective values. It is very important that the number of variables on that line equals the number of values. Otherwise, you will get an error message. See? Great! This is a great start to our journey in Python. Make sure you go through the exercises attached to this lecture. We'll see you in the next one. When programming, not only in Python, if you say that a variable has a numeric value, you are being ambiguous. The reason is that numbers can be integers or floating points, also called floats, for instance. Integers are positive or negative whole numbers without a decimal point. Let's create x1 and bind it to the value of 5. Now, x1 is an integer. Do you agree? A specific function in Python can prove this is correct. It is called type. Within the brackets, we must place the name of the variable whose type of value we want to verify. So in this case, I'll type x1. OK. Shift plus Enter, and the result we obtained is int, which indicates the value is an integer. The type function can also be applied directly to a value instead of a variable. For instance, if I write type, open parentheses, minus 6, close parentheses, Python will correctly point out that minus 6 is an integer. Good. Now, let's assign the value of 4.75 to a new variable, x2. I would like to check its type, hence, I will use the type function again. 
This is a float. Great. Floating points, or as you'll more frequently hear, floats, are real numbers. Hence, they have a decimal point. 4.75 is such a number, therefore, Python reads it as a float. Let's look at two other built in functions. int transforms the variable into an integer. That's why 4.75 turns into 4. Float instead will add a decimal point to the integer value and will turn it into a float. Not all variables should assume numeric values. An example of such type of values is the Boolean type. In Python, this means a true or false value, corresponding to the machine's logic of understanding ones and zeros. On or off, right or wrong, true or false. Let's provide an example with a new variable, x3, which is equal to true. Right. The output of the type function is bool, which simply means x3 is a boolean. An important detail you should remember is you have to type true or false with capital letters. Otherwise, Python won't recognize your variable as a boolean and will display an error message. So, to wrap it up, the two boolean values a variable can have are true or false, and they must be written with capital letters. Thank you for watching. In this lesson, we'll learn about another type of values that can be useful when working in Python. Strings are text values composed of a sequence of characters. Let's see how we can create a string in practice. If we ask the machine to display the name George this way, we'll obtain an error message. Why? Because Python assumes George is the name of a variable to which we have assigned no value. Here's the magic trick that will correct this mistake. Let's type single quotation marks around the name George first. And now, let's type double quotation marks around it. You see the output values of these two inputs are the same. This is how Python displays text results if you don't use the print command. Should you use print, the output will be shown with no quotes. You'll be able to see plain text. If we assign this value to a new variable, let's say x4, we can obtain its output as we did with the integers and floats. Alright, so that's it. If the values you'd like to assign are not numerical, the quotes can come into play. Assume the variable y is supposed to represent the number of dollars you have in your pocket. In addition, you would like to ask the machine to print out a statement that says, Y dollars, where Y is a number. The proper way to combine the value of Y and the string dollars is to use a plus sign, as shown here. Let's execute this cell to check if we are missing something. Apparently, we did not respect the rules of coding in Python. We cannot put different types of variables in the same expression. Y is an integer, and dollars is a string. We can convert Y into a string. String, str, is the built-in function we need. Analogically to integers and floats, string will convert our number into text, and that will unlock our result. To summarize what we said so far, Python can automatically guess the type of data you are entering. It is within its capabilities to know for sure whether you have assigned an integer, a float, a boolean, or a string. You need not declare the types of variables explicitly, as you must do in some other programming languages. Python always knows the type of variable. What will happen if you type something like, I'm fine? You'll need the apostrophe in the English syntax, not for the Pythonic one. Observe, if you execute the command like this, you will make a mistake. To avoid that, in such situations, you can distinguish between the two symbols. Put the text within double quotes and leave the apostrophe, which technically coincides with the single quote between I and M. Now you are fine. An alternative way to do that would be to leave the quotes on the sides and place a backslash before the apostrophe within the phrase, and we'll still obtain the same correct result.
This backslash is called an escape character, as it changes the interpretation of characters immediately after it. And what if we wanted to state press enter, where we put enter within inverted commas? Same logic. The outer symbols must differ from the inner ones. Put single quotes on the sides, and you obtained the desired result. Finally, let's go through a few ways of stating values. Say you wish to print red car on the same line. If I write it like this, two words next to each other, separated by a blank space, I'll see them attached. One trick would be to put a blank space before the second apostrophe of the first word. Let's see. Nice. That looks like the desired result. Another technique would be to sort of add one of the strings to the other by typing in a plus sign between the two, just as we did with the $10 example a minute ago. Okay. As your intuition probably tells you, if you print this combination instead, you'll obtain the same outcome, but it won't have the quotes on the two sides. And here's a new trick. I'll type print red, and then I'll put a comma, which is called a trailing comma, and Python will print the next word, car, on the same line, separating the two words with a blank space. Shift plus enter. Great. Let's print the number 3 next to the number 5. Boom! Fantastic! Here it is. What will happen if I don't use the print command and just list a few integers, floats, and strings, separating them with commas? Python will execute the command as expected, but will place the values within parentheses. Great! Now, we're going to repeat the same lecture adapted to Python 2 code. Going through it can be really helpful to those of you working with that version of the language. You can use it both as an exercise and as an opportunity to learn about the small but not unimportant differences between Python 2 and 3. Enjoy! In this lesson, we'll learn about another type of values that can be useful when working in Python. Strings are text values composed of a sequence of characters. Let's see how we can create a string in practice. If we ask the machine to display the name George this way, we'll obtain an error message. Why? Because Python assumes George is the name of a variable to which we have assigned no value. Here's the magic trick that will correct this mistake. Let's type single quotation marks around the name George first. And now, let's type double quotation marks around it. You see the output values of these two inputs are the same. This is how Python displays text results if you don't use the print command. Should you use print, the output will be shown with no quotes. You'll be able to see plain text. If we assign this value to a new variable, let's say x4, we can obtain its output as we did with the integers and floats. All right, so that's it. If the values you'd like to assign are not numerical, the quotes can come into play. Assume the variable y is supposed to represent the number of dollars you have in your pocket. In addition, you would like to ask the machine to print out a statement that says y dollars, where y is a number. The proper way to combine the value of y and the string dollars is to use a plus sign, as shown here. Let's execute this cell to check if we are missing something. Apparently, we did not respect the rules of coding in Python. We cannot put different types of variables in the same expression. y is an integer, and dollars is a string. We can convert y into a string. String, str, is the built-in function we need. Analogically to integers and floats, string will convert our number into text, and that will unlock our result. To summarize what we said so far, Python can automatically guess the type of data you are entering. It is within its capabilities to know for sure whether you have assigned an integer, a float, a boolean, or a string. You need not declare the types of variables explicitly, as you must do in some other programming languages. Python always knows the type of variable. What will happen if you type something like, I'm fine? 
you'll need the apostrophe in the English syntax, not for the Pythonic one. Observe, if you execute the command like this, you will make a mistake. To avoid that, in such situations, you can distinguish between the two symbols. Put the text within double quotes and leave the apostrophe, which technically coincides with the single quote between I and M. Now you are fine. An alternative way to do that would be to leave the quotes on the sides and place a backslash before the apostrophe within the phrase, and we'll still obtain the same correct result. This backslash is called an escape character, as it changes the interpretation of characters immediately after it. And what if we wanted to state press enter, where we put enter within inverted commas? Same logic. The outer symbols must differ from the inner ones. Put single quotes on the sides, and you obtained the desired result. Finally, let's go through a few ways of stating values. Say you wish to print red car on the same line. If I write it like this, two words next to each other, separated by a blank space, I'll see them attached. One trick would be to put a blank space before the second apostrophe of the first word. Let's see. Nice. That looks like the desired result. Another technique would be to sort of add one of the strings to the other by typing in a plus sign between the two, just as we did with the $10 example a minute ago. OK. As your intuition probably tells you, if you print this combination instead, you'll obtain the same outcome, but it won't have the quotes on the two sides. And here's a new trick. I'll type print red, and then I'll put a comma, which is called a trailing comma, and Python will print the next word, car, on the same line, separating the two words with a blank space. Shift plus enter. Great. Let's print the number three next to the number five. Boom. Fantastic. Here it is. What will happen if I don't use the print command and just list a few integers, floats, and strings, separating them with commas? Python will execute the command as expected, but will place the values within parentheses. Strictly amazing. We've made excellent progress, and you've learned a lot about the Pythonic syntax. As we did so far, going step by step, perhaps, it looks simple and easy but it is actually important to respect the syntax of a language while coding. In the next lectures, you see this is true. Stay tuned for the next lesson, where we will continue exploring Python syntax. Thanks for watching.